Hi, I'm Nan Wyatt from KMOX, along with my Total Information AM co-host, Steve Jankowski, welcoming you to the 1996 Baseball Like It Ought to Be Cardinals highlight video. And what a year it was. New ownership, a fantastic new manager, and a new passion for the game. The entire season was a hit. This year, we were Central Division champions. Next year, it's all the way to the World Series. We'd like to thank all the KMOX listeners who tuned in to cheer the team on and to check us out each morning for the latest news, traffic, and weather updates. And, of course, sports. So join us weekdays from 5 to 30 for the latest on the Cardinals and everything else you need to get your day started. Enjoy the video. See you next year at the World Series. Hey, I play on Fox. What's going on in there? This is going to be great. Let's go live to Pittsburgh. To Detroit. To the Summit. The Civic Arena. The Pond. We're covering your hometown team. That's incredible. We can do this because we are there. I believe in, uh, in, in high goals. I believe in big dreams. And uh, my dream, real quick, for the Cardinals is for this franchise to draw 3 million-plus fans. Because if you think about why 3 million people would be excited about coming to watch our games, it would have to be because we were a competitive winning ball club. Uh, and I want us, as early as possible, to get to September 1st with a chance to win. Baseball like it ought to be. The story of the 1996 St. Louis Cardinals. When spring training opened, the Cardinals had more optimism than usual. The franchise had new life. And Tony La Russa felt confident that the organization made the right moves to make them a competitive ball club. We've had a good club of guys that I think are excited about our chance to win. You know, it's not often that you have new players, new managers, new coaches. That's a lot of newness. The fellows that we brought over here, you couldn't have hand-picked any better. I mean, they were uh, proven winners. Each one of the players that we added were guys who had been in the postseason. Among the key acquisitions, Ron Gant, who had played in the World Series twice. Gary Gaetti, a winner with Minnesota in 1987. Relief ace Dennis Eckersley, who spent nine seasons with La Russa in Oakland. Andy Bennis pitched in the postseason with Seattle in 95. Todd Stottlemyre, a member of two World Championship Clubs in Toronto. And Willie McGee, who enjoyed his finest seasons with the Cards. The fans sure love Willie, and Willie loves St. Louis. I know this place. This is my heart. This is where it all started. You know, this is my heart. Opening day in New York did not feature an injured Ozzie Smith. The many changes were tough to keep up with. It is my pleasure to introduce the 1996 St. Louis Cardinals. Batting second and playing shortstop, he has won the gold glove 13 times. He is the wizard, Ozzie Smith. The veteran roster sparked confidence in skipper La Russa, but the many changes had left some folks quite skeptical. There's a lot of skepticism. This was the uh, storied St. Louis Cardinals, and it had been a long, long while since an outsider had come in uh, to uh, revamp everything. I think early on, because we had three or four veterans with a lot of experience, people thought we had an old club. If you look at our team, we really got a nice mix. We got some guys like John Mabry, you know, Royce Clayton early in their career. We got some guys right in the middle like Langford and, and Gann. We got some young pitchers in the middle of their career like Andy Bennis and Stottlemyre, and then you've got young pitchers like Alan Bennis and T.J. Matthews, you know, so we really have a, a well-balanced club. In addition to new players, newly renovated Bush Stadium 
celebrated its 30th anniversary with the excitement of a Broadway show. Baseball is back. It's alive and well in St. Louis. Nobody's opening day compares to what we have here in St. Louis. We'd like you to meet the 1996 St. Louis Cardinals. I don't think I've ever been that nervous before in my life. Outfielder Ron Gant. Let you know that baseball was back in the air. Let's wish them well. Let's hope they bring us a winner. This beautiful, magnificent lady has never looked so good at 30 years old. All the fans that paraded in took one glimpse of the new grass and they said, oh my goodness, I didn't think it was going to be this beautiful. For crying out loud, don't drive on the grass. A lot of different interactive activities for Cardinal fans. Homer's Landing, of course, much talked about out there in the left field bleachers. The new features made things lots of fun, but little did anyone know how fun a ride it would be. When the team visited San Diego in early May, they were hopeful of breaking an old jinx. You see, the Redbirds had lost 15 straight in San Diego. So now, how about this losing streak? It's got to end sometime this weekend. Well, there's no way to explain it. And now with so many changes in the ball club, we have to believe it's going to come to a halt. What's going to make it come to a halt is good pitching. Donovan Osborne's got that one, two, three look on his face. Tidy defense. Tom Pagnazzi, a tremendous job of blocking the play down. And timely hitting. Now I'll say one thing about the Cardinal attack tonight. It has been opportunistic. Nobody knew what the future would hold in San Diego, but Dennis Eckersley and his teammates were just happy to end the jinx. Double play ball, and the Cardinals win it here in San Diego. And the 15-game losing streak to the Padres here is history. Yeah. The Cards had their ups and downs in the early going, but John Mabry's batting average heated up to 340. Mabry proved he's one fine hitter. To come into the league like he did last year and hit 300, I mean, that's, that's real hard to do. And then people might say, well, he had to have had a hole or two they just didn't discover, so they'll figure it out this year, and he's hitting 300 again. Try to make good contact every time up. Gap to gap power with, with uh, absolutely no speed. <laughs> <laughs> He hits a long one to right center. The ball one hops the wall. Three runs will score. And Mabry is four for four again. But I think one of the keys to him, he's a real hungry hitter. He's like a Tony Gwynn, a Wade Boggs. He never throws an at bat away. How many hitters do you see nowadays with flesh to wood? When you're hot, you're hot, right? And Mr. Mabry, is, woo, he's off the scale. Especially at Coors Field during a May game in which Mabry accomplished a baseball rarity. Could John Mabry possibly do the improbable here? I really didn't know what was going on. Single, double, triple so far. I was so into the game that, um, that I really didn't understand. 2-0, there's a drive to right center. Fortunately, you know, 2-0, he just left one up a little bit. Out toward the gap, and the ball is gone! And I got enough of it to, to scrape the paint on the on right center field, and, and it dropped over the fence. It's the cycle for Mabry! When I came back to the dugout, the guys were all, yeah, high-fiving me, and I was thinking, yeah, hit a home run, you know, and finally got another one, because <laughs> it's been a while since I hit one. Guys nice going, John Mabry. They said, you hit for the cycle. I said, no, no kidding. And he's gone right up the ladder in his four at-bats. And then afterwards in the clubhouse, they said, well, you hit for the natural cycle. That's a lot of total bases for one night right there, folks. Now that I look back at it, it was something pretty special. Despite Mabry's accomplishment, the Cardinals suffered a tough defeat that day as Colorado's John Vanderwall belted a pinch hit ninth inning homer 
to hand the Redbirds a frustrating loss. Their hopes of being a legitimate contender appeared to sag. It was time to put up or shut up. I mean, we were 17 and 26 uh, leaving Colorado our first time. It was a very, very tough series. And we went down to Houston and uh, played the Astros. And this was a team we felt we had to, to beat in our division. During their first visit to Houston in late May, the Cardinals opened some eyes with some great pitching. First, it was Donovan Osborne, who fired a complete game in the opener. And then in game two, Todd Stolemeyer was good in the clutch. Ah, he hits one right at Gaetti. That's how you get a speedy runner. High slider away, and he strikes him out to strand three more. This ball club has been able to forget about what happened yesterday. Uh, they got great character where they can show up, and regardless of the adversity they went through on the day before, the series before, they've been able to clear their heads and go out and, and uh, do the best they can on the next day. And in the finale, the Roos' Redbird showed that resiliency again. That is well hit to right. Has that got a chance to go? You bet. Home run for Mabry, that's his fourth, and the Cardinals lead four to nothing. Alan Bennis picked up the victory, pitching eight strong innings, and the Cards had completed a three-game sweep against their arch rivals, the Houston Astros. The only offbeat note of that early season high point against Houston came when coach Mark DeJohn, who usually keeps a low profile, took part in one of the most talked about plays of the early season. Mabry slashes out a line drive. That naturally is a fair ball. The guy Ball's in play, pal. What a bonehead play. Oh, John, okay. He's the bullpen coach. Yeah, okay. What in the world are you doing? I wasn't paying attention. And you know what happens when you don't pay attention. Tony Fossis came up from behind me and he says, hey, that was a fair ball. I said, what? He said, that ball was fair. And I just, I just kind of wanted to find a hole. He says, is there any way you can dig a hole in AstroTurf? Because yep. I'd like to get in it. I was really dumb. Dijon was forced to face the music when Tony La Russa broke the bad news. He took me out of the coaches room. He said, hey, the guys want to see you. So he led me out there. I kind of faced the music, and uh, they let me have it. He kind of hit at first, and uh, he didn't want to come out. He was beat red, and, and we got him pretty good, and we still get him every now and again just to remind him. But Ozzy ordered a gold glove from Rawlings for him. He signed it and put a great catch on there. When it got back to baseball, the Cardinals again faced arch-rival Houston only a week later. The best game of that series featured some late-inning heroics. A real beauty spearheaded by Luis Alisea. Here it goes! Way back! The game is tied! Louis has done it again! Cardinal magic in the ninth inning! Alisea's third homer in four days tied the score of 4-4 in the ninth. Then in the tenth, one out, the batter, Tom Pagnazzi. Way back to left field. Made the four Cardinals. More late inning magic on this home stand at Bush Stadium. Well, anytime you hit a game winner, it, it's a great feeling. You know, circling the bases, you can't wait to get the home plate. Your teammates are there to mob you. Uh, fans going crazy. It, it, it was a great feeling, and you know. Uh, some people say that was, you know, part of a turning point for the ball club, but I think we had a lot of turning points. That was just one of them. The Cards went on to sweep Houston for the second time. Shortly after, when the team flew to San Francisco, the Cards were in a bit of a fog. Despite their success against Houston, Tony La Russa sensed there was still much that needed to be ironed out. The players hadn't really gelled as a team. It was already June 9th, the club remained inconsistent, and after a disastrous 9-0 loss to the Giants, the cards were locked under 500. The frustration prompted some of the veteran Redbirds to call a team meeting. We were playing bad, and we decided that we need to get some things out in the open, so a couple of us were talking on the plane. Um, we decided, hey, okay, we're going to meet in Pag's room after the game, after we get to L.A., coming from San Francisco. We met, we sat there for 
boy, it, it seemed like all night. We weren't playing good baseball. We weren't pitching well. We weren't playing good defense. Timely hitting, it was non-existent at that time. And I think guys were pressing, you know, and, you know, trying almost too hard to make things happen. There was never any question about the talent that we had. And it's not necessarily, um, you know, having all the talent in the world as much as it's having the right chemistry. And I think at that time we figured that we had the right chemistry. Now it was time to, to put it all in the same mix and, uh, and, and stir it up and uh, start doing the things that we were capable of doing. And I, I think that's what happened. A newly found unity emerged from the meeting and the team began to gel. The players seemed to come together at just the right time. It's a lot of times you have a couple of new players, or maybe a half dozen, and you have to worry about clicking. But one of the key things I was taught, you know, even when you have the same guys every year, you gotta, you gotta gel that year. It, gelling has a lot to do with playing hard and caring about each other, but one of the beauties of baseball, you know, there's a couple of big months ahead of us, and it's always what you do, it's not what you did. One of the players who really hit his stride during June was Brian Jordan. Brian heated things up from the cleanup spot. Say, BJ's having a great time here in the hot weather. He has been unbelievable with runners in scoring position. He has 20 RBIs in his last 10 games. He just adds to his 400 plus average with runners in scoring position. He's come up with more big hits than anyone else on this Cardinal club of late. He's had a six RBI day and a three hit day. Here's a guy who's taken off since being inserted in the cleanup role. I never thought I'd be hitting number four, you know, for the Cardinals. I can honestly say I'm still learning this game, and uh, I feel like I'm still two years away from my potential. You know, I have a long way to go, but uh, one day I'll conquer this game. Jordan was too busy playing football until he got that phone call from the Cards and traded those shoulder pads for a bat. He's a football player learning to play baseball. You know, that's what he was a few years ago. Now he's a baseball player, period. He's really stepped his game up. From two years ago to now, he's a totally different, different type of player where a guy who just was out there playing just on natural strength to a guy who, who understands the game now. He's really developed into being a superstar player, and, and I think he's going to... In my view, I think he's going to do nothing but get better. Well, Brian's a great athlete. He loves to, to succeed. He works very hard. I, I feel that he's going to be successful. Brian possesses that unique combination of power and speed. You know, he is so fast that when he's running to first base, I almost expect to look up and see him breaking the tape. Jordan hit an incredible 400 with runners in scoring position, helping the Cardinals offense take off. Yet as a young player was coming into his own, a St. Louis Cardinals legend decided to call it quits. To the point. Um, as I complete my final season as an active player, I would like nothing better for all of us than to be a part of one more world championship team. I just want to thank everyone who has helped the Cardinals and me during the last 15 years. Thank you. The heartfelt goodbyes were many. After announcing his decision to retire, Smith was selected to the All-Star squad. And prior to the Midsummer's Classic in Philadelphia, well-wishers flocked to the Wizard like a ground ball to his mitt. Hey, Grandpa, you fight. Fight. You fight. You fight. I know, man, I know, but I, I, I'm, I'm about three years behind you, man. You know? He ain't no first. Yes, I am, man. Yes, I am, but hey, best of luck to you, babe. And, uh, you know, I took your advice. I didn't hit you no balls. You sure did. All right. You sure did. Hey, Dirk. How you doing, an especially touching moment came when Ozzie stepped to the plate to bat in his 15th and final All-Star game. The big crowd at Veterans Stadium gave Smith a standing ovation, as did the All-Stars. Pretty good right there. Woo! Chills. After that All-Star high, the Cardinals started the second half of the season with the heart of their lineup in high gear. Things really clicked during a game against the Cubs at Windy Wrigley Field. Starting off a home run onslaught was John Mabry. Pitch coming, swing and a high fly ball. Deep center hit by Mabry. At the track at the wall and goodbye. It's a Chicago adios. 
I had him corked it in the lap. This ball's going to leave the park. Back to back home run. They bring in Gaetti. The Cardinals were just getting warmed up for some more big shots. A high drive. It's going to leave the ballpark, and it's way out of here to the very back part of the bleachers. When you do things like that offensively, it does wonders for the confidence of the ball club. It's a great thing, a great asset to be able to hit home runs and, and, and uh, drive in a lot of runs in a ball game and, and show each other, one another, that uh, you do have the capability of doing it. And Ray Lankford goes deep to right field and homers against the back screen. Here's a long one to left and goodbye, Mr. Baseball. A three-run homer by Brian Jordan and the Cardinals now lead 12 to one. Six home runs for the Redbirds today. The club record is seven back in 1940. And watch out, Gant may tie it right here. Oh, there it is, back at the wall. Seven home runs for the Redbirds today. And that ties the uh, club record. That was probably the point where um, we gelled together as a ball club and we finally started getting that feeling that we knew one another. And, uh, you know, after that game, things started clicking for us. And, uh, you know, that's probably the one game that I would put, point my finger at and say, hey, that's where it all started. After that July 12th rampage, the cards were 47 and 42 and tied for first. But it wasn't only hitting that got the Redbirds back on track. This trio formed one of the best defensive outfields in baseball. And Ray Lankford and the entire team worked hard at making some big plays. Here comes Gant! Magnazzi's throw right on the base. Ray Lankford with a diving catch in center. He caught it! Brian Jordan at the wall. by Brian Jordan. He's been doing it all year long. Another diving catch by Jordan. Defense is a pitcher's best friend. Just ask Andy Bennis. It was a catch that turned around his frustrating start. I was pitching against Philadelphia here in St. Louis. And ninth inning, it was two to two. It was a hot day. Brian Jordan makes a diving catch with the bases loaded in the gap. What a great diving catch! Might have saved the ball game. I'm who I am, and I'm excited. And if a guy makes a great play, when he comes off the field, I'm going to be there to congratulate him. And when he came in, I remember telling him, I said, "You don't know how big of a catch that was." I go from being three and nine to we come back and Brian Jordan scores the winning run, and I was four and eight, and I was able to put together another eight wins in a row. People sit there and say, pick out his best game. Well, he had 15 of them. I went through a streak of about 10 to 15 starts where we were scoring seven or eight runs. Every game I went out, we'd score seven or eight. Well, I was giving up zero, one, or two, and so obviously I was getting some wins. It wasn't only Andy chalking up the Ws. Younger brother Allen was also making his mark. The duo thrived in their first full season in the same rotation. Alan and I are four and a half years apart, so we've never had an opportunity to be on the same team. For brothers to be able to play at this level uh, is one thing, but to be on the same team is really special. And to have uh, your brother sit next to you on the bench or pulling for you, you know you always have somebody there that, uh, that's going to be there for you. With, you know, big brother there, it's like, you know, I wanted to show him that, that I belonged here. They say that if you like Andy Bennis's slider, you'll love Allen's slider, maybe even better than that of his brother. Well, I think we're a lot alike. I mean, we both uh, fastball pitchers, uh, hard slider, and changeup. The Bennis boys nurtured their love of sports from early childhood. In our family, our free time was always sports. We just all loved playing, and I'm very, very thankful that our parents were supportive that you know we were involved in athletics and and they support us 100 percent come on andy and as you would expect they still lend plenty of vocal support when mom and pop bennis come out to bush about racing for 
professional ball players. I like to think we spent 25 years of our lives raising good people. Just need one more strike. One more. Come on, right now. How many million times do you suppose that we have said one more, one more strike, one more strike? Under the thoughtful guidance of Tony La Russa and his staff, the Bennis brothers came into their own. Both Andrew and Alan have said how they like play for, uh, for Tony La Russa. They respect his knowledge of the game and, and his, uh, his focus on the game. I can't tell you how many times Tony came out to the mound during the course of the game uh, when I was struggling uh, and said, I know you're really, really trying. Tony likes to come out and take charge. The manager's role, I believe, is more important than ever. Trying to get these players focused on what's important. Let's try it now, play There was no doubt that the hiring of Tony La Russa was paying off some big dividends for the Cardinals. I started. All started last fall. We had to find a manager, and Tony was the guy that I wanted all along. Here comes a guy, Tony La Russa. He's heralded, but he's from the American League. He was advised by Sparky Anderson a couple of years ago before you hang it up, you must manage in the National League. And as Tony said, I did everything else Sparky told me to do, so here I am. This guy loves a challenge more than anything, and I think that's why he's here. He saw a chance for him to be challenged like he's never been challenged before. The one constant that struck most everybody around the Cardinals was La Russa's unwavering concentration on the task at hand. His intensity, day in, day out, you know, I've never played for a manager like him. He's push, push, push. He tried to get everybody on that, on that same page. Go, let's go, let's go. I mean, you feel him, you know, you know he's there. You know, you know he's there all the time. And, you know, Tony pushes it. Tony's gonna, he's gonna fertilize it every day. <laughs> you know, he's gonna make it grow quick. Tony is one of those guys that, as a manager, he's right on that line between insanity and being a genius. Is this La Russa out of his mind? To appreciate Tony, you have to see, you know, see him over a course of six months. Players will respond to people they respect. They see that he wears the uh, birds on the bat with a lot of respect. The Cardinals were one half game behind Houston as they braced for seven games in two weeks against the Astros. The Cards hope to boot the Astros on Houston's home turf. Game one of this big weekend four-game series, the Astros and the Cardinals, first place on the line. Well, it should be a dandy of a series. It's the one everyone has been waiting for. For seven innings, Donovan Osborne held the Killer Bees in check. When Ray Langford delivered this blast, the Cards broke through with a 1-0 lead. And Ray also helped make it stand. And the Cardinals are 7-0 against Houston this year. But a setback came the next day. 1-1 one, one game in the ninth. High drive. Straight away center. Langford at the wall. Goodbye! A painful mistake for Stottlemyre, who had pitched so well. And yet another headache came the next night in a 4-1 loss, spearheaded by Astros slugger Jeff Bagwell. Tomorrow's game is twice as important for the Cardinals because if they lose tomorrow and leave out of here two and a half behind, they could have a problem. In the fourth and final game of the series, it was Willie McGee who came through in the clutch with his two-run home run that sparked the Redbirds. And the game is tied at two. Old number 51 comes to the rescue. Then in the seventh, Royce Clayton knocked home Mike Gallego with the go-ahead run. Then old number 43 came into ice it. Hopped him up on the infield, and the Cardinals split the series. And the Redbirds are only a half game out of first place again, Al. When the teams hooked up again six days later, the Astros hoped to hike up a one and a half game lead, while the Cardinals intended to leapfrog Houston in the standings once and for all. It was September, and this was the final three game showdown against Houston. We are set to play baseball. The intensity was thick, and the Cardinals' dominance clear-cut. A game-and-a-half deficit turned into a game-and-a-half lead. St. Louis swept, defeating Houston for the 11th time in 13 games. You know, the Astros were our main opponent, and 
it seems like um, you know when this team's backs against the wall and we have a have a chance to do or die we always do head to head with these guys we did it just like we'd been doing it ever since we had the meeting you know we're going to concentrate on this game the things that we need to do at the moment i think i look back on the game that uh where we played houston and willie and ozzy really those two guys really took control of that game the two players in the twilight of their career combined for an incredible seven hits and ten at bats and the wizard even went deep ozzy smith has hit his second home run of the year how about that Tenth inning, go ahead, run on second. McGee at bat. If McGee gets a hit here, he'll tear the place down. Bringing the ground ball up the middle. The shortstop can't get it. Here comes Ozzy. Here comes the throw. They may get him. Save! Save! Ozzy scores. Look at this scene at home plate. Have you ever seen a more gutsier performance by two great champions than we've seen here today? McGee and Smith have pulverized the Houston team. The oldest Redbirds still came up with their share of big contributions to the Cardinal cause. Ozzie and Willie, guys with a combined four decades of experience. Those two guys are, are awesome professionals. The way they are as people, um, the way they play and approach the game of baseball and the respect that they have for this game is awesome. Ozzie and Willie are a pair of top flight performers in more ways than one. I saw you on a television commercial the other day. I Did you? Yeah. I tell you, boy, I'm starting to get nervous again now. Just like I did in the 80s. Boy, they did these boys make me very nervous, Henry, these youngsters Henry, out here. Henry, take it easy, Henry. Well, you know, I, I get excited about my baseball now. I know that's right, but I tell you, I've been watching them boys out there, and I agree with you. You know, I'm starting to feel a little a little hot flutter too. I, I the blood is deep, deep penetrated. Boy, they, they get exciting, and I tell you what, they're at it again. It was kind of ad lib, you know. I mean, once you know, we had like a script, but uh, for uh, you know maybe five or six words to start it off. But then after that, it's just flowing. You know, two old men sitting in the barbershop talking about the good old days, and uh, and I guess it worked. <laughs> We had 15 guys in that clubhouse for two hours after the game watching it. I mean, it was hilarious, the outtakes of it. Playoffs, it was the playoffs. Playoff. Yeah, Playoff 19, 1985, that's right. And that boy was playing the Dodgers. That's right. No, we wasn't playing the Dodgers. No, yes, they were playing the Dodgers. <laughs> <laughs> you wasn't playing Walter. <laughs> Actually, the first time I watched them, I didn't even realize it was them. I'm still not sure which one's Henry, which one's Harry, which one's Willie, or who, who's what. And I told Willie when we did it, I said, you know, I don't think people will know. If you don't say or you don't put underneath, people would not know that that was the two of us doing that. They have to actually look and look back and to see who it really is. First of all, they couldn't believe I did something like that, so they were stunned, you know, it's like, is that Willie? Because, you know, Willie McGee is such a shy guy, you know, so for him to do a commercial like that, it's like... You know, somebody must have been pulling teeth to get him to do it. I think it really shocked a lot of people. Walter, how many times I got to tell you, the boy's name was the wizard. Yeah, that boy the wizard. I tell you, I seen that boy one day. Walter, Walter, his name was the wizard. If I have to tell you again, don't make me hit you. It was a big day when Ozzy met Walter, Walter. McGee. They uh, put the camera on me, and I actually got to meet him. He wasn't on camera, but I got to meet Walter. Well, golly, man, I've been wanting to meet you a long I, time, too, Walter. Oh, I can tell all my 18 grandchildren, boy, that I met Ozzy Smith. What do they call you, the, the gizzard? Maybe we can get a... Uh, uh, a Tony Award for uh, for comedic uh, <laughs> creativity, I guess. <laughs> it was time for the old Redbirds to get back to the more serious business of clinching a pennant in September. This was baseball as it ought to be, and with the brass ring within reach, the card showed a will to win. Wow. Runners are going. The bunt is beautiful. Now the he is coming home to throw. He's safe. Way alone in the left field. Back, back. Oh, run. BJ gives the Cardinals the lead. Five to three. I think some people are starting to believe that it's pennant time. Four, four games, 13th inning. 
into left field. Here's Mejia. Cardinals win it. The magic number is five. He pops it up, and the magic number is going to be one. Gallego calls it. Cardinals win 3-2. The Cards arrived in Pittsburgh on September 24th with a chance to clinch. The Pirates took a one to nothing lead, but the Redbirds hung tough. In the fifth, Brian Jordan made another diving grab. And then in the seventh, 2-1 to Gaetti. Long drive in a deep left center field. Track, wall, tied 1-1. And there's only the third hit of the night. It belongs to Gaetti, and it's a game-tying home run in the seventh. Base hit right field. Cardinals lead around third. McGee, and he will be out at the plate. Then in the eighth, Brian Jordan's blast launched a three-run outburst, and the Cards added two more in the ninth to give them a seven-to-one lead. It was time for a celebration. Liriano hits it down the line and right into the corner. Jordan is there. He has it, and the Cardinals wrap it up. Get ready, St. Louis. Postseason baseball is coming back to St. Louis for the first time since 1987. The Cardinals and Tony La Russa are headed to the postseason in 96. Well, it's a great feeling, uh, you know, with the new new regime, everybody, a lot of new players, and, and trying to battle through a lot of things, uh, and it's very rewarding. But, uh, you know, this is just the, the first stop. It feels good. I mean, uh, I'm just happy we did it today and didn't have to wait any longer. I mean, uh, it's been a very exciting time, a very, I guess you could say, pressure time, because, uh, you know, everyone was starting to feel a little pressure because we had to do it, and uh, I'm just happy we did it today. You know, right now, it's a, it's a joyous time for everybody because, you know, these guys have worked hard to get to this point, and I'm, I'm happy to be a part of it. Ozzy also felt happy to have his number retired in 96, along with former greats Red Shane Deanst and Nina Slaughter. And shortly after the Cardinals clinched the division flag, they returned to Bush Stadium for the final homestand and a special tribute on Ozzie Smith Day. The sentiment of the occasion brought an outcry of emotion. And for Ozzie, the moment was overwhelming. Not everybody get to experience that. And that for me was something that I never dreamed of growing up, what would happen to me at some point in time. And you can only wish and hope that people appreciate what you do. That, there's nothing to top, you know, 52,000 people coming out to, to say thank you and to say goodbye to you for something that you've probably tried to present. I don't, you know, I don't know if anybody's ever experienced anything like that. But there, to me, there's nothing like that from an emotional standpoint because uh, that's the highest compliment that anybody can be paid. Ozzie Smith had that quality that captured something special about the game. When he went into the hole to pick up a ground ball and bounce back up to throw across the diamond, we were reminded every time why we love this game. And I'm sure that there are millions of people who are baseball fans because of Ozzie Smith. There are two words that we have to use at this moment. And those words are bitter sweet. I don't know how much more energy you have left. But here he is. Go crazy, folks. Ozzie Smith. I'd like to thank my mom for being my inspiration and my driving force. I'd like to thank my, my family for their support. I'd like to thank the Cardinal organization for the support and the opportunity to perform in front of the greatest fans in the world. I've often been asked, what was my greatest highlight? But I must say that being here today with my family and 50,000 of my closest friends has to be the highlight. Thank each and every one of you for traveling down my yellow brick road. Thank you. A fitting tribute for a hero. But the final pages to the story had yet to be written. He's going to realize, you know, that last game, man, this is it. All these emotions will just come out. 
and he has had an awesome career. Awesome. The postseason shine on Ozzy and the Cardinals for the first time in a decade. There was a charged atmosphere at Bush Stadium in game one of the divisional series, and the Cardinals responded by striking early against San Diego. With two on in the first, Gaetti was the hitter. Fly ball, right center, back at the track at the wall, Finley. He can't get it. Home run! Home run! Three to nothing, Cardinals in the first. Gary's home run took pressure off Cardinals starter Todd Stottlemyre, who struck out seven in six and two thirds. The Cardinals held a two run lead with two outs in the ninth when Tony Gwynn faced Eck. Swing up the middle. Eckersley has it, out at first, that's a winner! The emotion of a 3-1 win in game one had the Redbird riding high. I think emotion had a lot to do with it because I think it's bringing our team closer together. I think that's what exactly what we needed is to have that feeling of getting excited and, and bringing us close together. Yeah! Yeah! There was also much to get excited about in game two when Andy Bennett struck out nine Padres in seven innings. I started off really well. That's probably the best five innings uh, that I've thrown all year. Uh, with the exception of one pitch, I was pretty much pinpoint with anything I threw up there. So uh, that was a type of game that maybe you don't have very often, and it was nice to have it in a playoff game. In the bottom of the eighth, with a score tied at four, the Cardinals had two runners in scoring position. The batter, Tom Fagnazzi. Swing and a line drive off in glove. Jordan scores. It proved to be the gamer, and the Padres proved to be in dire straits as the best of five series moved back to San Diego for game three. Things appeared bleak at the end of five as the Cardinals trailed four to one. Then in the sixth, Andy Ashby delivered to Ron Gant. Swing and a long home run. That digs into the lead. Way back into left center off the bat of Gant. And makes it 4-2 and gives a little life to the Redbirds. The Cards scored twice more in the sixth to tie it, then took a 5-4 lead in the seventh. But in the eighth, Ken Caminiti launched a home run to make it 5-5. Then with the Padres' go-ahead run on second, T.J. Matthews pitched to Jody Reed. What a play by Brian Jordan. When the ball was hit, um, I knew that Brian was going to catch the ball because he's been doing it all year long. A lot of times when the ball's hit, I can tell if he's going to catch it or not, and most of the time he does. And that one definitely, I, knew, I, I was already running to the dugout when that ball was hit. Then in the ninth, Jordan the batter. Jordan waits. He could deliver a telling blow. Swing it along with it to left. Might leave the park. It's at the track at the wall. Home run for Jordan. He's done it all year, and he did it again. What a comeback for the Cardinals. Now with a 7-5 lead, they turn the ball over to Dennis Eckersley. He faced Steve Finley with two outs in the ninth. Line drive to center. There's Lankford. Atlanta, here we come. That's a winner for the Cardinals. 7-5. The Redbirds are winners. And we're going to Georgia. It was time for a little celebration. A celebration well earned for a team that baffled all the experts, except for the ones wearing Cardinal uniforms. This is Demetri Young, you know, rookie phenom. Demetri, tell me how that champagne tastes for the first time. Come up here and uh, kind of backdoor a, a penny. Well, you know, it tastes real good, but it, it's even better when I get to do something like this. Yeah! It was on to Atlanta for game one of the National League Championship Series, as the defending world champs expected to chop their way through St. Louis with ease. 24 game winner John Smoltz held the Cardinals to two runs through eight. Andy Bennis continued his streak of fine postseason pitching striking out seven and six innings. Yet the Cardinals lost 4-2 despite Andy's efforts. 
obviously everybody was picking Atlanta to beat us. And so when you go out and you play, no one expects you to win. You can let it all hang out. And uh, we've been able to do that all year, and we've been able to respond real well. So uh, we don't mind that role. Uh, we haven't gotten a whole lot of respect, but I think uh, what's important is that we go out and earn our respect. Perhaps Gary Gaetti earned a bit of respect before the game by signing a few autographs for Braves fans. Good luck, Gary. Gary. Gaetti! I'm a Braves fan, but I like you! Gary obliged the youngster, but was much less obliging to the Braves in the top of the seventh. The Cards had just taken a 4-3 lead as Greg Maddox delivered with the bases packed with Redbirds. Swing and a long one into left. Get up, baby. Grand slam. Home run for Gary Gaetti. And the Redbirds rattle Meta. Rattled him right out of the ball game. And with the cards leading 8-3, the crowd at Fulton County Stadium was sent packing. It was then just a matter of recording that last out. It's sidearm and a ground ball out back to the mound. That, oh, a wild throw. And that's a winner. As Eckersley threw wildly to the first. Call them the Cardiac Cardinals, but Tony LaRusso's bunch was ecstatic to even the series at one game apiece. We know we went to Atlanta and we took one out of two. We did our first part of the job. So emotionally, you know, there's a lot of pressure. There's, there's some great feelings, excitement. Um, you know, it's going to be a lot of fun. And, and I'm glad to see that, you know, it's been 10 years since we've had it here in St. Louis. And I know this place will be jumping. As the series moved back to St. Louis, enthusiasm reached a fever pitch. Oh, God! When it was time to play ball, the crowd was loud. Atlanta manager Bobby Cox hoped his Braves could silence the record-sized crowd early. Let's go, let's go, let's go, boys. Come on. Come on. Come on. But the cards would have none of that. St. Louis came out swinging right from the get-go. Tom Glavin found himself in a first-inning jam with one on and one out as he delivered to former teammate Ron Gant. Swing and a long on the left. Might leave the park. Up, up, and... Away! And the Cardinals lead it 2-1. to one. They always like to keep the crowd into it. Mr. Gann has just put them front and center. Bronze Homer also put the Cardinals ahead by a score of 2-1. to one. Then again in the sixth, Lavin to Gant. Swing and a high fly ball to center. Back at the track, at the fence. Up, up, and away! It's three to one. Why well, you think this crowd's not having some fun? You should be here. The cards went on to win it three to two, thanks to Gant and thanks to the big crowd. They were enthused the whole game. I mean, it, you could, you know, you can hear them out there and out in left field. It gave me a lot of uh, incentive, and a lot of uh, adrenaline for uh, for today's game. I mean, uh, without them, I don't know if I would have did what I did today. <laughs> With the two games to one advantage, the intensity on Tony La Russa's face was matched only by that of the big crowd. St. Louis had set a postseason attendance record. Yet game four took on a different storyline. This time the cards trailed three to nothing after six. In the seventh with two men out, Tom Pagnazzi followed a John Mabry single with a walk. That put runners on first and second and La Russa opted for a pinch hitter. After a talk with La Russa and Ron Gant, 22-year-old Dimitri Young stepped to the plate to chop away at Atlanta Braves relief pitcher, Greg McMichael. The pitch is driven to left center. This ball is deep, and this ball is off the wall. Mabry scores. Pagnazzi scores. Dimitri going for third. It's a triple. A 3-2 ball game.
Young scored on an infield hit, and it was tied at three. In the bottom of the eighth, it was Brian Jordan who stepped to the plate. Swing, long one, left field. This ball is gone. Into the bullpen. Four, three, Cardinals. Listen to this crowd. You think they haven't had some ball game here tonight? The Cards had remarkably taken a 4-3 lead. And just as Jordan ruled in the eighth, in the ninth, the law was set forth by Dennis Eckersley. Swing and a miss! He struck him out! He struck him out! The Cardinals win this one four to three! You just cannot believe it, folks. A remarkable ending and a fantastic display of clutch hitting by Brian Jordan and, of course, Dimitri Young. But in baseball, fortunes turned so quickly, and the adulation turned to frustration against Atlanta's pitching. <laughs> Cy Young, Cy Young, Cy Young. I mean, it, it's pretty simple. Uh, like I was telling somebody the other day, uh, you're, you're facing John Smoltz in game one, 96 Cy Young. Well, if you, if you don't beat him, huh, you get to face three times Cy Young Award winner in Greg Maddox. You don't beat him, huh, another Cy Young behind it. You got, you know, Glavin. It's like, it just doesn't stop. The Cards suffered heartbreaking losses in games five, six, and seven. And a thrilling postseason ride had suddenly come to a crashing halt. A final note of solace came during Ozzy's last at bat. The Wizard received a standing ovation, and he made that long, last walk to the Cardinals' dugout. Cards had pushed the defending world champs to a seventh game, only to lose 15 to nothing. While the Braves celebrated, the Redbirds could only lament. You know, a lot of tears around the clubhouse. You don't see men crying very often, but it's really, it really hurts when you know that you're really close to having the opportunity to play in the World Series. And so, uh, but at the same time, we got beat by a better team, and so. Uh, We'll be ready next year. I know what it's like to win the World Series, and, and I know what it's like to be, you know, lose 100 games. In over 15 years, this is probably the most remarkable season that I've ever been involved with. Fans greeted the players at the airport to give a sincere word of thanks. The Redbirds were once again a team to reckon with. People will take notice of the St. Louis Cardinals. I don't think that people really took us too seriously this year. Yeah. We've proven to people that we have a lot of ways of winning ball games and uh, a lot of uh, a lot of weapons. One thing I want to know is, is that the St. Louis Cardinals gain respect, and I think we've we've done that. And with Manager of the Year Tony La Russa at the helm, the Cardinals are in great position to shoot for that pot of gold. As for 1996, well, it was baseball, like it ought to be. That is lit, and that's his second of the night. scored 11. What a day. And the Cardinals are three and a half games ahead of Houston. What a come from behind win. Swing and a high fly ball. Into left. At the track. 99. Kiss me. The city Al has fallen in love with this baseball team again. So are you trying to avoid the champagne in there, Mr. Clay? I'm trying to start the music. <laughs> what about this? This is our first interview be behind closed doors. <laughs> Something new. Hey, you might want to get in here. You're safer in here. Double play. Double play. Good. Yeah, right. Wrong no. team. Wrong team. Wonderful double play. And if that. <laughs> not not the time for double play. Oh well. I have noticed that almost every team there is either wears white or red or gray, which is rather confusing to grandmothers. Hey, hey come here, check this out, real quick. You guys have been following us around, right? Look, who, what's that say? Andy. 
Give me the jacket. The season's over. Give it up. What does that mean? You have to No, I'm in charge of everything. I got to outfit the guy. No, no, that's why they hired me. That's why they signed me. They didn't sign me to pitch. They signed me to make sure he had clothes to wear. You're the worst. You're the worst. You're the worst. Is being able to motivate your team to play every day hard and and uh, eliminate or limit <laughs> limit the mistakes. <laughs> Come to the ballpark here in Cincinnati and picked up the sports page and realized that you're a thief. I've lost all respect. Move your thumb. <laughs> you're a thief. Officer. Was there anything particularly inspirational that anybody said? Well, I think there was a lot, but uh, I think it's going to be left right where it was left, and that was in my hotel room in L.A. Uh, nice try. That's okay. <laughs> I'm, not looking for, <laughs> I'm not looking for any stuff like that. What was that old boy named? The, the lizard? The, the gizzard? Walter, how many times I got to tell you? The boy name was the wizard. The gizzard? What? It, Walter, don't make me hit you. The boy name was the wizard. <laughs> Man, I like them. I, to Man. I was sitting there, Walter. That ball went 500 feet. Boy, 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 Henry, I tell you, I don't. What were you drinking then, boy? The same thing I'm drinking now. Some ice water. No. <laughs> <laughs> I might go out there today, man. I might go out there today and then do some hooping and hollering myself. Because you know what? They're back at it again. If I can find me some help to get out there. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. That was good. That was great.